I'll do it a little differently tonight since all three presentations are from well-known board members. I'll let them introduce their own subject for you. Uh, for a new person, it will be Jeff McLeod, Bob Trembling, Diane Hall. Uh, Diane and Jeff don't wear berets, so you can wear your own down from here. <laughs> But um, they have vast and varied astronomical interests and experiences, uh, from juggling to solar ambassadors with JPL and Diane, knowing everything about everything, as far as I can tell. <laughs> so Seconded. I'll, I'll, yeah. <laughs> okay. I meant that in a nice way, unlike in his comment, I think. <laughs> But anyway, uh, you guys can take it away. Just go on up first. All right, get get this. I'm gonna I'm gonna like tune into my inner Gary Ross. Get this out of here. Okay. So I came really close to like channeling my inner Gene Kranz and like vesting up to be your uh, flight director for the evening, but I was just like, yeah, that's right. Uh, and unlike an Apollo flight director, I don't know how long this is gonna take. So make behave. Uh, and make sure I don't go over. So hopefully we'll get to the moon in 15 minutes. Uh, and hopefully you guys don't know all of this stuff already and it'll be pretty entertaining for you. Uh, it's kind of just going to show you just, I'm basically going to talk for 15 minutes and every single thing I say has to work or you don't go to the moon. And so I'm just going to be listing pieces that have to work and maneuvers that have to work. So here's our uh, Saturn V rocket, I'm sure we're all familiar. Three stages, yeah, it's, it's the good stuff. So first stage, five F1 engines. I'm not gonna go into like all the thrust and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but basically, this is like orbital mechanics 101 kind of stuff. So most of your rocket isn't to get you up above the Earth, it's to get you going laterally fast enough to get into orbit. So your first stage, we're going from Florida, Lasts for about two minutes, gets you not even to there. And so we're two minutes into our like eight day mission. This is junk. So then separates our, our S2, which is five J2 engines, fires up for I think six minutes or so. And this is here. And now this is junk. Uh, the S, this is a, a four. S4B is just one engine. Um, that guy fires up and there's, it, this is actually used for two purposes. So we're now into orbit around the Earth. And there's a couple of things that all have to be just right. So uh, if we're looking at the Earth sideways, the moon's on an, in, it's inclined at about five degrees. And ideally, we want to launch at that inclination when the moon's right here. If we, if we do it when the moon's here, we, we have to change our, our orbital inclination in space. We can't just launch at a, at a different angle. So that's one maneuver that we might have to do, which uh, basically we have this orbital ring and we're going to turn sideways and, and adjust that inclination to match to the moon. Because if you go out at the wrong angle, uh, that's a problem. So, uh, once we're lined up, as long as we're in a pretty nice orbit, we're fine. We're not trying to dock with the International Space Station. If we were, you have to you have to get your orbits almost perfectly matched up to, to do something like that. And so if anyone doesn't know, if I'm in an orbit like this, Earth, and my rocket is here, and I want to be up here, I, I don't go this way. That's not how it works. I go this way and I get an orbit like this. And then when I'm here, I turn around and I go this way again, and that brings me up here. So it takes two burns to, to raise that orbit up. And these are actually in counter directions. So you, you have to speed up and then slow down to go up. And it's like that with just about every single maneuver. Uh, it's not like driving a car. So uh, basically, and this is the interstage ring. You ever see that famous footage of the ring coming off? I love that shot. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, that's this guy right here. So we got the S4B and all this stuff up here right now. And we're in orbit. So we want to get to the moon. If we uh, 
do a smaller, well, we can do it here. So we're going around, and we need to go out here. And it's the same thing. We want to make an orbit that is going to come way out to the moon. But it's going to take us four days to traverse that orbit. Well, if you point here, the moon's going to be here when you get there. That's the problem. So you have to design your orbit to be somewhat up over here so that when you're coming out there, you're going to match the moon when you get there. Uh, no easy feat uh, of, of mathematics to do that. So you uh, figure all that out, fire your S4B again. This is what's going to give you a what's called a lunar uh, translunar injection burn. So now we are essentially, I'll do the nice little squiggly, we're heading towards the moon. Uh, at this point, we start doing a lot of intricate, this is like what uh, uh, Gemini was all about, all the different maneuvers that you have to do to make this system work. Uh, we've got a service module, a command module, and the lunar module. We're all familiar, command service module. So uh, there's four panels on this outer section that need to get peeled away. So this is like one more thing of like bolts that have to fire and all this fancy things that have to separate correctly. Uh, they do a 180 degree turnaround, they come back and they actually pick this guy up and pull it out. Uh, then they that, jettison it. That docking maneuver is a pain. <laughs> oh my god. Like so many things <laughs> are about to happen. Uh, so then the S4B is jettisoned, but we're already on uh, a lunar uh, insertion trajectory. So the S4B kind of follows behind them at this point. It, it's going to the moon, essentially. And on later missions, they actually made it impact the moon so that they could study what would happen. Also, there was an Apollo mission where they kept on seeing a UFO following them. It was the S4B uh, behind them. <laughs> so this is jettison, more garbage out floating in space. Uh, at this point, we start doing what's called the passive thermal control roll. So, say the sun's shining, well, I guess it's shining at this angle right here. So, we've got our little spacecraft here, and we orientate it uh, perpendicular to the sun and start rolling it. So, it's, it's basically a rotisserie chicken at this point. It, it, so, it cooks evenly. If you just let, let one side, it'll burn, the other side will freeze, not good. Uh, and so now we start doing sightings uh, and talking to mission control. So uh, as I understand this, which this is also like, better get the numbers right, you got all these field stars out here, and you can actually look at the angles between the moon, the earth, the sun, and these field stars to find your position extremely accurately. So then they give that information relay back, okay, we're here, so we do a mid-course correction burn which entails going out of the thermal control, getting into orientation for the burn. They're usually like a one second burn of your service module engine. And then back into the control roll for another one, for another one. Because uh, you want to be making sure that as you're approaching the moon, you're going to get into something good. Because you basically have to hit this guy in a way where at your closest approach, you can do another burn to slow down to get into orbit around the moon. Jeff, just, uh, just a point, that, that right, right about where your third dot is, is where the uh, 13 had its explosion. Yeah, it was two-thirds of the way there or so, yeah. Uh, not the best place. I mean, I guess no, there's not, worse places. No, it was the happen, best place. Yeah. yeah it was the best, best place. Yeah. And, and that's another thing that, like, I, that's my favorite movie, but there's a lot of mistakes in it. Like, oh, we're going to use the Lemus lifeboat. That was already thought of. It wasn't a new idea to use the Lemus lifeboat. There's a lot of things. I still like the movie. Uh, so we're burned. Uh, that's using, again, the service module engine. So this guy gets fired up a bunch of times. Uh, once we're in orbit around the moon, and in the original, like, first couple of missions, they actually did these elliptical orbits and then did another burn and brought it in, did another burn and brought it in, and they kind of did it in stages because it's just a little safer. Because uh, if you get this wrong, 
you either smack into the moon or you go drifting off and now you're in orbit around the sun forever. <laughs> or like 40,000 years or something like that. Uh, we got a hot mess here. So, uh, this is when things start picking up because two of your guys now go out of, we all know that everyone's in here, right? Like we got three astronauts in the little triangle. To, like they're not walking around over here. Uh, so two guys go out, get into the LEM, separate, leave one guy behind. Uh, they do, they have, okay, so if we blow up our uh, lander here, there's actually a lot to this guy too. Uh, there's the descent propulsion system, the ascent propulsion system, and basically the actual place where the astronauts are, door, ladder. Did you ever see that this step? That, that like one small step for man, it's like this high, it's not a small step. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, this guy's a, a liquid rocket and it's going to be used multiple times. Uh, the ascent is chemical, it just ignites and one, one shot. It, but that was designed so that it would work um, every time. I thought they were both chemical. Nope. Uh, well, both liquid and chemical. Yeah. Uh, the difference is the the ascent. Once it's lit, it's lit. Yeah, it's the, not. The, the it, descent you, was throttle. Right. Ball, yes. But the ascent wasn't. No. Right. Right. Okay. Once once it's going, it's going, and it's going to burn until it's done burning. Uh, and then they actually use the react control thrusters for all the orbital maneuvers, getting back to the command module. So descent. <clears throat> how are we doing on time? Pretty good? 8.42. I don't know what that means. Okay. You've been up there 12 minutes. Huh? 12, you've had 12 minutes. Okay, so i got to, like, get home soon. Okay. <laughs> so they land on the moon, they do some stuff. Then they get back. <laughs> 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 This guy is now garbage from here down. It's, it's left on the moon. I mean, why, why carry all that back up just to, to leave it? So you come back up, and then this, this is the one that really gets me. Uh, you've got the command service module orbiting the moon. You've got these guys on the moon. The timing, you have to ascent and match up. And I've played around with a space simulator enough to know, like, when you get it wrong, you have to wait, like, days yep. to catch up. It just, it's, it's horrible. You can't do that. You have limited resources. It, it's got to be right the first time. Uh, and they, they do kind of a, a similar thing where it's kind of a, a, uh, elliptical rings getting closer and closer over a couple of orbits. Uh, once you meet up, you get everything back into the command module, including the hundreds of pounds of rocks, which are pretty light in lunar orbit, but still, you have to move them all. Uh, everyone gets out. Now this thing is junk. Uh, they just kind of ditch it in orbit around the moon, and now we're heading back in just our command module. So that guy fires again to get you on a Earth trajectory mission, or uh, trajectory. Uh, Apollo 11 only needed one mid-course correction coming back. It's pretty good. Uh, but the same thing, you go through those control rules, however many course corrections you need. The same thing with all the sightings. Uh, you get here. Oh, something that's not really talked about much, and I actually learned uh, not too long ago. Somewhere in here, there's another space woman. Does anyone know that? No? There was something yeah. retreat. Yeah, yeah, yeah they got there's, filming there's from the cameras. outside. Uh, and instruments in the service module, and they would have to spacewalk out there, get the film canisters, because they didn't have Wi-Fi to like wirelessly transmit all the data. They were pulling out film reels and then bringing them back in. Uh, and there was also handholds and, and all kinds of rails to where if the docking probe didn't work, they would actually, in suits, go from one spacecraft to the other. Uh, which I thought would be kind of comical. Uh, so you get your stuff. Once you're back into orbit, you ditch. We already ditched this guy. You ditch this guy. Oh, and this is the escape tower. That was ditched a long time ago. So, of all this, 
This guy goes into a museum. <laughs> These guys are at the bottom of the ocean. This guy either impacted the moon or is floating around the sun. This guy probably, well, one of them's on the moon. This guy's either floating around the moon or has already hit the surface. And then this guy comes back. Uh, shoots open at 40,000 feet or something like that. Questions? Where does the rover come from? Where does the rover come from? General Motors. <laughs> It's they, 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 oh, oh, there's, there's bays, there's kind of, okay, so this is kind of, I think it's octagonal in shape. There's these bays here for instruments, and they actually origami folded the rover into one of those corners, because this is like all of your, like, tanks and stuff for this engine. So, Ikea is what you're saying. Basically, <laughs> yeah, they, uh, space magic. uh, Von Braun really wanted the rover. They canceled it. Uh, some executives at General Motors said, we're going to do it anyway. Made this crazy origami design that would work. Basically like a, a, a mattress with wheels. <laughs> just like to me. Uh, and the story is he like drove it into his office. And he's like, oh boy. So, uh, <laughs> which I've never understood why General Motors doesn't like use it in commercials. Like, hey, we did this. Just a quick note, uh, the electronics on the rover were made of Caterpillar. <laughs> there, the, I've heard that the reason why our moonshot was successful is because of all the private industry that, that, that worked on the project. The Russians tried to do everything themselves and it was just way too much work. Uh, I think Boeing made this, North America made this, North of Grum, this is uh, Grumman. Every piece was made by different companies. The spacesuits were made by different companies. Point of interest that I always thought was the F1 engine that you're talking about. There, there's five of them. They operated in sequence. Two of them on opposite they at 90 degrees uh, angle. Yeah. They operated at uh, 250, 270 milliseconds for two of them, and the center engine at 550 milliseconds. So think about one second, a thousand yeah. one. In that time period, you've got these two engines going every 270 milliseconds, which is a long yeah, it's, time. It's, it's above my pay grade, but there's a lot of vibrational oh, mechanics boom, in something boom, like this. Boom, and boom, yeah, boom, uh, boom, all the way our, our keynote speaker a couple years ago talked about the pogo sticking effect that those engines can have. And when you see the, uh, the, 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 the rocket uh, going off past the gantry, um, the 18 or some odd seconds it takes to clear the gantry, it's burned half its fuel in yeah. the first stage. And <laughs> the amazing thing here is that you think that's slow motion. It's not. Oh, yeah, it's that's already going, actual yeah, speed. It's already going 300 some miles an hour, and it's it's crazy. Uh, I, I like there's a uh, so Lovell was uh, a Gemini astronaut, and some of the rookie to Apollo said, "Oh man, that thing shakes like crazy." Well, Lovell was on an ICBM. He said, "No, those things." Smooth compared to one of those. Yeah, nobody liked Titan rockets. Yeah. We have one more question, then we'll have to move on to Bob. Oh, I got just one quick one. All of the math was done by uh, hand and, and not, no computers. Yes. Well, well, I mean, they had some computers, but yeah, slide rules. Slide and, rules. Uh, slide yeah, I mean, the rules. astronauts on, on journey, you know, pen, pen and paper and slide rule, that's all you, all you had. So they, they were navigating by sext sextants like sailors of the high seas. That's what I love about the Apollo missions. It was so seat of your pants, like we probably shouldn't do this, but hey, let's do it anyway. <laughs> all right, round close to up. Good. <laughs> hey, Jeff, with 30 years practice, you could turn into Gary Rose. <laughs> so, Bob, well you want us viewing the screen yeah. and not you, right? Yeah. Okay. What do you want? <laughs> 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 <laughs>